for joining us on another interesting outing on The Woman in You. This is a platform where we come to tell you that every woman is marvelously blessed by God Almighty because every woman is wonderful. Every woman is outstanding. Every woman is marvelous, adorable, and nice and should be treated that way. Sister, you are 100% that queen. Welcome to the woman in you. Today we have an interesting personality to talk to. To see the woman in her, how she's come this far, the journey so far in her life, and how she has gotten to where she is today, believing in herself. And I tell you, you can achieve as well. Yes, she is an interesting personality. She is a woman of God. She is a mother. She is a grandmother. She's a, an ex-lecturer, if I should call her that, yes. She's gone through a lot. And you'll see her, she's beautiful. She's someone you want to talk to, you want to spend time with and talk and tap from the wealth of her experience. Welcome, as you join me, to bring on Dr. Mrs. Augusta Ubene. She is Vision Coordinator, Christian Women Intercessors for All Nations. Good day, ma'am. Thank you for coming. Good morning. I was leaving the Swift fan out. Swift fan. Swift fan. Yeah. And, and, and that's, the, that's the acronym. Yeah. Okay, I like that. <laughs> Swift fan. Thank you for joining us on today's uh, edition of our program, The Woman in You. Okay, I've been looking forward to this time to talk with you. I've heard so much about your doings and all you've been doing so well. I want to say congratulations and thank you for, mm -hmm. for doing that, you know, taking care of the children of God. <laughs> We want to know, we want to meet, not just to know, we want to meet the woman in Dr. Mrs. Augusta Ogbeni. So who is Dr. Mrs. Augusta Ogbeni? Thank you very much, Joy. Uh, I, I call you Joyful Joy. Yes. <laughs> uh, I am Dr. Mrs. Augusta Edewede Ogbeni. Well, my husband is engineer Thomas Ogbeni. I'm blessed with six lovely children, big children, not none is less than thirty five now. Wow. They're not <laughs> no. children anymore. They are men and women. They are men and women, <laughs> men and women and then of course uh, by the grace of God I have nine grandchildren, still wow. counting. Wow. I'm a retired uh, chief lecturer from Federal College of Education Technical Asaba and uh, what else? I'm the vision coordinator of Christian Women Intercessors for All Nations. Uh, nations. I want yeah. to stop there now. Okay, uh, we'll take that. So that's a good introduction. Mm -hmm. Now let's 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 go memory lane. Let's go down memory lane. Let's way back. Yesterday years. We want to see you as a girl while you were growing up. That young girl there was hey, the same, Augusta. Augusta today <laughs> she's mommy, she's grandmother. Let's look at you as a young girl. Yeah, I was born into a family, okay, my father and my mother, and then my siblings were 11 children, we were, we were 11 children, mm. uh, death has snatched about five away from us now, mm. uh, but it's okay, we are still hanging on mm. there, and then I'm the uh, first daughter of my father, and uh, from a do state. Oh, wow. Okay. Even though people think I'm from Delta, I'm yes, from because you've, been, you've yeah, been in been Delta for a very long time. Yeah, that's right. That's oh, yeah, true. but you're married to, De to no, Delta. No, no, no. My husband is from Edo State. We came to work here, and then we settled here. We okay. found Delta, our resting place, our rent open. So okay. we just settled down here. Wow, that's day. nice. Mm. That's nice. Okay. So, growing up, was it that challenging? Uh, growing up, how was it? Yeah, growing up was, well, for now, I, I would say it was challenging. Then, as a child, we just thought it was normal, normal mm -hmm. living. Uh, our parents were not rich. My parents were not rich. But they, they just had uh, basic means of taking care of the children and so on. I, incidentally, I grew up in Port Harcourt. It was during the war that we came over to uh, Edo State and all that. Mm. And uh, I went to, in Edo State, I went to Anglican Girls Grammar School, Benin City. Mm. And then uh, I did my NC at uh, the, the defunct College of Education Technical, sorry, College of Education, Abraka. Mm. And then I went to University of Nigeria School for my first degree. And my PhD also, I got it at University of Nigeria School. But my master's was done, I, I mean, got my master's in America, University of Pittsburgh. Wow. Pittsburgh, nice. Pennsylvania. Wow, you and, really uh, I have been teaching forever. Mm. 
<laughs> okay, that's nice. So you really, really have. What else? I think that's that way you get your PhD. I think that's that's the height. They say yes. Yeah. You really rate. Is there something else we'll go? Another degree we get after PhD? <laughs> no. Well, it, it depends on what you are looking if, for. If you want to go back to reach first degree in, yes, another field, in another field, you can do that. Uh, well. you, you really, you really gone to the peak of uh, education as an educator yeah. yourself. Mm. Okay, that's nice. Uh, uh, kudos to you, ma'am. Thank you. Now, in in going to school all through, you went through primary, you went to secondary, you went to the universities, you got the NC, you got the degrees, masters, and PhDs. Uh, was it just Rosie? You just you just said something. Your no, parents no, no. were not that rich. It was not Rosie. How did, you, how did you go to school and got the PhD? Also? It was not Rosie. It was a. Uh, it was quite difficult. I, I must confess, and I give all the credit to my mom, who believes so much in uh, child, a uh, girl child education. Uh, when my father, you know, as a an ordinary clerk, didn't have money to to pay school fees. My mom said, just give us your blessing and I will struggle to pay her school fees. I don't want this one to miss going to school. I see something in her that many people do not see. Mm -hmm. I'm her mother, so I know what, I know what I'm seeing. It, for, as a child, it sounded strange to me that my mother was interested in me going to school mm -hmm. and my father was not really interested. My father didn't see why I should go and get married. My mother said, you will get married, but go to school. Yes. And then the idea was, when you get the certificate, come and dash me. That was her attitude. And so mm. she labored, labored to pay my school fees. Mm. And it was not funny. There were times I was sent away from school for not being able to meet up with the school fees. Mm. And then it meant staying at home for about two weeks, three weeks. Mm. And then uh, I saw my mother sell her wrappers, sell her jewelry to pay school fees for me. She just believed in me so much. And that was how. I wow. pulled through secondary school, thank God, I did well in my school set. Then I went for the NCE and the same thing. Then when it was time to go to university, again my mother was there for me. Wow. And uh, she just believed I should go. She said, go and wear that academic gown and come and let me see you. Mm. So I went to school, then I, of course I got married. <laughs> I got oh. married so somebody else took over the mm, responsibility, responsibility of my going to school and all okay. that, which was okay. And then when I wanted to go, go for my master's, I had a federal government scholarship. Wow. That's so nice. I went to do my master's in University of Nigeria, uh, Peace, mm. sorry, University of Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, mm. Pennsylvania. Mm. I, had, I had my master's there and I came back, settled down to family life. But my mother was behind the scenes, still worrying me. She said, I see people they call doctors. What is wrong with you answering doctor? <laughs> So that brings us to ask you now. What, okay, your mother now wanted to be a doctor. Yes. So as a young girl, you wanted to be a doctor yourself. What were your own I wasn't, dreams? I wasn't what like did you, who do you you want to be? All right, let me say, uh, you you were going to school because your mom wanted you to go to school and she believed in you and you were doing so well as yes, well. That's yes. why you could get the scholarship. Sure. sure. Very fine. Mm. But you should have a dream. You should have something within you. Say, I'm looking forward to, in the future. I want to be. This person. Yeah. What was your dream? Uh, okay, I had a dream. That's true. As a as a girl, I, in my secondary school, it, I said to you when it was when the war broke out that we came over to Edo State. Remember I mentioned it. Yeah. So I was in secondary school in Port Harcourt. I had a principal who was who had a bachelor's degree. A young lady, but she was so you know prim and proper. She was like my dream kind of person, my model. And I was like, if I would just get a first degree like this woman, that would be enough. So that was like my dream. Mm -hmm. But as I finished my first degree, I found that there was more mm -hmm. that I could do with myself. And people were saying, oh, you are very intelligent and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So, and to read was not a problem for me at all. So I just pushed on and found, when I got my master's, like I said, I settled down to start having my children and all that. Mm -hmm. And uh, one day- Master's in what, ma'am? Master's in education. Okay, education. Yeah. So my mom came one day and said, I had them calling one woman doctor. They said she has something they call PhD. How? What is involved in getting the PhD? I said, Mama, you go to school and get the PhD. She opened her bag and brought out uh, one thousand naira and, uh, and said, "Take go and collect the form." <laughs> For one thousand naira. Yes. Mm -hmm. so okay, maybe then. Then one thousand naira no, was then, big now, money. That was um, year nineteen ninety nine. Wow, that's mm -hmm. big money then. So I I, I went I went I sent for the form from University of, of Nigeria and Suka. And then went in for my PhD. Just like that. And that was it. Wow. 
Wow. Okay. <laughs> but I was already working. Mm. I was already working in fed, uh, lecturing at the Federal College of Education Technical and Saba. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. So so that means right from time you you kept, you read education also. So your vision, your dream was mm. to be. Um, Actually, I desire or... to be a professor. I will. I desire to be a professor in the university oh, setting, okay. but I couldn't make it. Oh, okay, but that is you still your thoughts. Yeah, yeah. You were well, in that field of uh, education. Yes, at no. very at various levels. I taught in the primary school, taught in the secondary school. I was a principal of secondary school for a period of fourteen years. Okay. Then got to uh, principal grade one, not special grade, grade one, and then now transferred my services to the. So, uh, sorry, federal government uh, establishment. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, when I started working in Federal College of Education Technical Asaba here, mm -hmm. I came in as a principal lecturer, and then God helped me. I grew to the highest, and that's chief lecturer. That okay. was in the year 2000. Okay. So I retired. retired. Yeah, I retired uh, as a chief lecturer, 2015. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's nice. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, ma'am. Mm -hmm. But in retiring now, you retire today. We, we see you. I've, of course, I've heard about you so, so much before meeting you for the first time. I've heard of the works that you do. You're actually working in the very yard of God today. As a young girl growing up, did you actually have any, any part of you dreamt about being an evangelist, or a pastor, or what? Again, I, I, most of the things I say, I make reference to my mother because she was a great woman. I can say she's really a great woman that believed in the girl child. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Seriously. She, she, one day, I don't know what came over her, she just, as I was, I was a young person, she just said to me, eh, is it possible for a woman to be a pastor? I said, Mama, I don't know. So I said, I see you doing God's work. So I said, I don't know, I don't know. All I know is that I'm, I'm, a, I'm a teacher. And I didn't understand. She too didn't understand what she was saying, but she just said, I see you doing God's work. I don't know what, whether a woman can be a, a pastor. And that was it. So, but when, well, I have always loved God, things of God, and so on. Not because I want to be yes, a pastor or anything. Pastor, just, yeah. okay, I gave, I gave my life to Christ so that I'll go to heaven. I don't Good. want to go to hell. You know, that Good. kind of uh, uh, impression. But I found that as I was doing the work of God, okay, go to church, do this, do that. Women had a way of coming around me. And it's like, pray for us, you are the one that will pray. Pray for us, you are the one that will pray. Preach, you are the one, okay. Gradually, I found that I was developing interest in helping people in the church, praying, fasting, and all kinds of things until the year 1998. And I had a call, I had a call that brought me into the ministry. I was still working as lecturer okay. then. Okay. So it was in 1998 that yeah. this whole journey started. Yes, started. That's correct. So today, 1998 is... Many years away from now. Yes. That's a long time it's ago. A long time I've been it. So can we just know how you started and you are here today? <laughs> I okay. I have some friends. Uh, like I said, I was. I, I have always been active in the church, mm -hmm. church activities, and then like I said, also women are always coming around me. Oh, you are gifted, okay. pray and all that. Mm -hmm. And then by 1998, it became clear to me that the Lord wanted me to do more than just stay in the church and organize uh, people, that people from house, other churches could benefit from what the Lord was planting inside of me. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I had this group of friends who will come to my house, who will pray, when we have time, we we'll pray and pray and pray. You know, it became one man tells another. And mm -hmm. I, I went there to pray, oh God answered my prayer and all that. So women started coming around me just like that, and then we'll hold fellowship and pray, but women from different uh, ch uh, churches. But it was clear to me that I was not supposed to start my church. It's just to run a fellowship of women, okay. hurting women, women that desire to be sharpened spiritually, mm -hmm. learn the word of God, go to your church and go and uh, manifest there, and that's what we are doing till Jesus comes. Wow, mm -hmm. okay. So, so far, how has it been? Walking for the Lord. It's it's very challenging but good, rewarding too. Okay. It's so been no. challenging but quite rewarding. I, I of course the Lord the, the Lord cannot give you an assignment that uh, he will uh, not be uh, by he, your side to he, help he's you. My master. Oh definitely he is. Okay. <laughs> now let's look at those challenges you've actually faced in life so far. Right from why you were a lecturer because growing up totally up until you are seated here today, you you've made a name that a lot of women kinda of will look up to you. 
and they like to say, okay, this is happening. Ah, Dr. Mr. Ben is there. I want to be there. Yeah. Let's look at the challenges you faced in life so yeah. far and how you were able to surmount them all. I, well, one of the challenges I, I had uh, as a, uh, growing up, as a, I became a principal of secondary school very early, in my early 30s. And so uh, it was like, uh, at that time, it was like an almost all men affair. I remember I was in the local government where I was the only female uh, principal. There's still a childbearing age, breastfeeding babies okay. and so on, So, but doing the work. So the challenge was like, why will your husband allow you to do that kind of a thing? This is this work is for men. It mm. is very very involving. See you carrying your baby every time and all that stuff. And I was always doing exclusive uh, breastfeeding. Breastfeeding, so I couldn't leave my children That's like that. Mm. So that was quite challenging for me. But God helped me. There was nothing the men folk were doing that I didn't do better. So that is for fourteen years I was like that. And then uh, when I came to Federal College of Education Technical Asaba, I came because my husband got a job here, so I had to okay. uh, leave my job as a principal to follow my husband. Okay. And then I came again. It was like an almost uh, so many so many of people I met were men, the men folk. They were like, where is this one coming from? Mm. PhD and all that stuff. Mm. So and then uh, to be the head of the institution was a mission mission impossible. But I thank God for the lady that is there now. Mm -hmm. And um, I applied to be a provost, and the opposition was very stiff. The fight was not a, a, a joking matter because I'm a woman. Mm -hmm. Because uh, people came up with all kinds of campaign. Then they now said I want to turn it into a church, turn the college into a church because they knew I was a praying woman and all mm -hmm. that stuff. But it's okay. I went on. But by the time I was uh, leaving the, uh, the college, God gave me the opportunity to be the first inaugural lecture presenter in the college. And that was a big honor. The women folk, they were so, so, so happy. It had never happened before. And since I left, it had not happened. Mm. So the first inaugural lecture presenter in the college. And uh, that brought a lot of joy to the hearts of the women in the college. Mm, so, nice. And then, well, here we are. Wow. Okay, as um, the the prayer, let's look let's look at the Christian, uh, Christendom as it is right now. We've got a lot of pastors, we've got general overseers, we've got evangelists, and all of that. I want to know the challenge you, as a woman, have faced as sitting here and being the vision coordinator of your Christian Women Intercessors for All Nation. Because I know there will be prayer programs that are out there, and you come. I see you're the one heading this side. You're in charge. You're the general overseer here. <laughs> and some of that men will look at you like, ah, <laughs> she wants to come and <laughs> sit on the table us. with us and all of that. <laughs> ha, have you had situations like that? Yes, because I you have. are a woman. And time and time again, they have all like, like, why is she doing this to us? The women are flocking towards her. They are all gravitating towards her. Why is she taking our women? You know, some people were so scared that I was taking their church members, which, which is not true. I'm not running a church, like I said before. Uh, you will pray, then you go to your church. On Sunday, me, I have my own church too. They complained initially, but now everybody, I'm everybody's mommy. Mm -hmm. They don't feel threatened anymore. They see me, they honor me. I will celebrate the grace of God upon your life. Some kneel down, mommy, please release mother's blessings on us, and so on and so on. Mm -hmm. on. But initially, yes, there were oppositions, but now, no. Not to my knowledge. Okay. Instead, many of them submit to me now. They come to me and say, because, to because me. you've made your mark mm -hmm. and because you believed in yourself yeah. and you stood your ground. Yes, I did. And you were here. Mm -hmm. stood my ground. That's I stood beautiful. my ground. I tell women not to get intimidated. I have gone through all, so I know what you are talking about. Mm -hmm. Don't be intimidated. Believe in yourself. Know what is inside of you. My mother made me to find out that I had treasure inside of me, and so I ran with the vision. Yes, I never allowed any man to put me down. Never. Mm -hmm. I said, I said to my daughters, no man is permitted to put you down. That does not mean that you should not submit to your husband. I'm, I'm still living mm. with your father, yeah. and we are living well. So, mm. But you are a human being in your own right. You must make a name for yourself. Make an impact in your generation. You must stand out in such a way that when you are no more, mm. they, they will, will say, you. somebody like this, mm. 
existed, mm, of course, lived. Yes, they have something to talk about you. Mm -hmm. when, mm -hmm. well, when she was alive, yes, do you she remember was she so, was so and so? That's correct. When she was alive, mm -hmm. oh, this would not have happened. Mm -hmm. That's correct. I've heard That's too correct. many that. Yes. This woman was like, yes. this won't happen. Yes, up till now, you know, you know, even in the family, at uh, the family circle, in, uh, circle in the village, and uh, when they are doing something, ah, if Sister Augusta is around, this nonsense will not happen. And they know it's true. And I was say, you know what? Wait, tell the person to wait for me. You will have me to contend with. As I call, you say, no, I didn't say it. I did it. Because <laughs> the person doesn't want your trouble. I say, my trouble, fact, they call it trouble. She has come with her trouble. Because <laughs> nobody wants the. People don't like the truth. As a matter yeah. of fact, that's what we've come to. We, have to, we still have to say it. <laughs> yes, we have to say it. All the same, it's the woman in you. And here we are speaking with Dr. Mrs. Augusta Ubenye, vision coordinator of the Christian Women Intercessors for All Nations. And we are here trying to encourage our fellow women, even our mothers, like you heard her say, that her mother gave her that uh, you know, assurance in me. that she is somebody and she pursued her vision. This is where she is today. And so we are encouraging us all, let us train the girl child. Let us help the girl child. Let's encourage the girl child to believe in herself. She's going to go a long way when she had someone encouraging and believing in her to be able to do that okay now mom let's look at uh, how violence against women can can come to an end i know every year they have this day to really uh stop violence against women to fight for women and all of that we keep preaching that the women should have a voice now let's look at how your advice or your take concerning violence against women well, I have never supported violence against women. I have never experienced it myself. You can't. You just. You have to look no, at the woman you, well. You can't try it here. <laughs> you have to look at the woman well to know whether to be violent to her or not. I mean, you can't. That is why I say, women, don't bring yourself down. You there is something God has deposited deposited inside of you that you can build upon. You know why the men treat you the way they do? Because you do no. You you feel you are of, of no value. Without the man, you, you know, uh, people criticize somebody like uh, Funke Adejumo, or that she's always talking about women having money in their pockets. And I say, I don't criticize. I say it's good. Every woman should be at least financially independent. And if the man knows that you have something, you carry change. He will not beat you up. He will not abuse you anyhow. When it is time to talk, he will reason with you. But some women are so lazy. They are not up and doing, and so the men don't have value for them, and they treat them anyhow. I want to just encourage all women, please, you are not burning of beasts. Of course, you know that one. And don't allow any man to, to kill you. If you are in a relationship and the man is always beating you, what are you doing there? When you are in the grave, there will be no sorry. So you better pack your things and go and hide first until the man comes to his right frame of mind. And I want to say, a man that beats the wife is worse than a beast. You cannot be able to say, you, you should love your wife, love your wife. So you cannot look at as you love yourself. You cannot look at, your, look at yourself and begin to slap yourself. That means you have a problem. Let us respect our uh, uh, women. But I also say to the women, respect yourself first. If yes, you, very important. I don't go and sharp mouth where a man is. Very Respect yourself. Be sure yes. you know what you are saying Same. and what you are doing. And you will, you know, you will now earn the man's respect. respect. Yes. So it's not a matter of, uh, I come from a rich home, so I will be rude to my husband. No, you will go and marry your father. That's it. Okay. So let's go back now to look at our, let's advise our young girls. Our young ladies, our youngest. You are a mother today. A grandmother and still counting for you you've had so much you're still counting so count more are still well, coming well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay okay <laughs> now so we know you're in the best position a better position to want to talk to young ladies young girls out there today we find a lot of our young ladies young girls beautiful on the streets beautiful we find nonsense. so many you know, doing some kind of business or trade they are not proud about. Mm -hmm. they, they won't be proud about going to mm -hmm. talk about it anyway, but they do it. Mm -hmm. And some will tell you because they want to survive. Mm -hmm. Some will tell you, okay, I stopped my school education because there's no money, so I need to do this. If you've got a few minutes to talk to such people, what would be your advice, ma'am? 
Well, I, like, like you know, I run women ministry, uh, all women ministry, and uh, I have opportunity to speak to mothers. And sometimes I meet them to bring their daughters if they are, if they will agree to come. I talk to them, try to mentor them. Uh, I speak to the girls and say, please, if you can, go to school. And you know what? Add value to your life. Then you will not be a prostitute. You will not be a street girl. A serious-minded person will know that you cannot go far being uh, a prostitute. Let me use the word as raw as it is. <laughs> yes. You cannot go far. Give yourself five, ten years. You are done. You are gone. We must think of our tomorrow. Do not eat up your tomorrow today. That five or ten minutes enjoyment can kill you. I see a lot of young girls in the evening in, in Asaba here roaming about almost half naked. What are they looking for? Money. And something you will spend in, in, before you know what is done in the morning is finished. For how long will you sell this your body? You are not even thinking of where you are going to spend eternity. You are not even thinking. Every Sunday, I see a lot of young girls in churches. What do you hear in those churches? So you just go to fulfill all righteousness and come out and begin to sell yourselves. Do you know what? No, there's no man that sees you on the street and sleeps with you for 5-10 minutes will love you to be the wife. They will not marry you because they know you are cheap. They can even, I mean, cheap, cheap, cheap. Pick you up. She, she, he will sleep with you, hand you over to his, his friends, and they sleep with you. In one night, you sleep with three, four, five men because you are collecting money. To do what? You sell your soul. If you die, you will end up in hellfire. So you have to watch it. Your eternal des destiny should mean so much to you. You, so you enjoy five minutes, uh, what do you call it, pleasure, mm -hmm. and then suffer in eternity. That is, man, is unreasonable. So let's watch it. Let's talk to our daughters and tell them that there is a better tomorrow than what they are seeing today. Do you know that that cloth you are wearing now, you are not proud of it, but you are wearing it because you want to belong. In another three months' time, you will not feel like wearing it. You are thinking of something else. That is how life goes. We must watch it, our girls. You destroy your womb. I know of one girl who uh, did an abortion, destroyed her womb. Today she's seven, seven years old in marriage, and there is no child. No fruit of the womb. She's weeping, thinking of what to do. I'm not saying people that have uh, 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 fruit of the womb issues that they all aborted. I'm talking about this particular one that I know of. So you have to watch it. How will your tomorrow be with what you are doing today? For look, what you are doing today is a seed you are sowing. And you are going to harvest whatever you have sown today. So watch it. Wow, yeah. The son will say, I can't go to school because I don't have anybody to train me dance well. You know, they have a lot of reasons. reasons. But like what you have said. Reasons. So now, uh, some will say, the person that uh, is supposed to train me, some will say, the uncle that trains me mm. is, is wanting to sleep with me, is doing a lot. Because you see a lot of this happen in, this, in the country, in the life we're living today. Now, what will you advise that young girl? That has an uncle, no, the, the father is no more perhaps, so just maybe we're painting the picture, but this is the only helper she has in life and actually has agreed to train her. But there are these conditions, conditions. attached to it. What would be your advice to such a young girl? Young ladies, if you have that kind of problem, come to me. And I will tell you what to do. Let me tell you something. Nobody should play God in your life. For what God has proposed in his heart that you are going to be. Take that your uncle away, you will still be. If you come to me, I will cancel you and tell you what and what to do. There is dignity in labor. Even if you are selling pure water, God will prosper that work for you to be able to get something good for yourself. Don't uh, That your uncle wants to sleep with you does not mean you should become a prostitute. No. I disagree completely with that, that uh, excuse that they come up with. My uncle wanted to sleep with me. I had to leave the house. and Leave the house to go to where? From fry pan into fire. Come, I will help you to pray that your uncle will die and then God will raise up another person for you. <laughs> <laughs> I say to you, girls, please don't sell yourself cheap. There must be a way out. You cannot be stranded all around. No, 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 no. God is not a wicked God. 
He will make a way for you where you do not know that there, there is a way. We went, some of us went to school with scholarship. I just said to you that my father was a poor man. I went to school with scholarship. I didn't have to sleep with anybody. This brain gave me most of the things that I have today. God helped me. So it's possible that you too can go to school and get a first degree. Yes. You too can go to school yes. and get a second degree. Yes. You too can go to school, get a master's, get a PhD degree. If you just feel my parents, my parents don't have, mm. how do I do? It's possible because there can be a way. Must but be. not with uh, you doing some things that you won't be proud about. Mm -hmm. Young lady, you are 100% that queen. I keep telling you that. Believe mm -hmm. in yourself. Yes, ma'am, we've got a lot that have been to school. They've read so much books, have got so much degrees, you know. But the society we are in today kind of does not allow the woman to emerge. We want to say kudos to His Excellency, the Governor of Delta State. He's done a lot in that area. He's, he's women friendly, let me use that word, really positioned women in Delta mm -hmm. State. But generally looking at the country, our country, yes, some are coming, up, but still, if we want to measure it, we know that women are not well placed. Another election is coming around now, next year. Mm. So let's, what was your advice? What's your advice actually to, on how women can be better placed in the society? Well, I, I encourage you, man, as much as possible, if you, are, you think you are politically inclined, please come out and uh, be a part of the moving train. But the problem I have with that is that women don't like to support women. So and women, some women don't believe in politics. They don't, they don't believe. And so some, won't, well, they won't vote. Uh, they won't vie for any uh, position. And if you are, as a woman, is coming, I say, what are you doing there? It's men, no. Mm -hmm. It's the men. They will go at, they will go to a meeting at midnight. Mm -hmm. you come. So you know it's, things like uh, that. It's a very wrong and negative orientation. I mean, it's not, it's not fair. It's not right. Um, yes, the men go to a meeting at midnight, but the women do not have to go to a meeting at midnight. If we support our own, mm -hmm. would we have to go to a meeting at midnight? Look. No. We we'll hold our meeting in the daytime and tell the men who want to go. They need us more than we need them. Let's not make ourselves cheap. These men, who will come out to vote? It is the women that will carry umbrella and stay, stay in the sun to vote. The other women, the, the, the men, they will be drinking and uh, jumping all over the place. So let us not make our vote cheap. Let us not make our, uh, ourselves cheap. No. If we can hold back a bit and support our fellow women, you, you know what will happen? The men will come crawling, begging us to support them. Women, please make yourself costly, valuable. And then I want to quickly say something about people graduate, graduating and not having jobs and so on. I advocate for skill acquisition. You know, thank God for the governor you mentioned just now. He's always talking about skill acquisition and then empowering people and so on. That's very, very, very good. Let us build on whatever the government is doing for us, you know, in terms of skill acquisition. There is nothing as good as being self-employed. You have control over what happens around you, the people that are around you, and so And you make your money, clean money, not, not duping anybody, not doing 419. So go and, every woman, go and learn a skill, learn something. And you will be better off for it. You, there will be no regret. That's beautiful. So women are being advised to come out, like I said, politics. Mm -hmm. uh, some don't believe in it, but we are here telling you today that politics is not dirty. Mm -hmm. A lot of women just believe that politics is dirty, so mm -hmm. that's why they won't play. They'll come and make it clean. Yes, if you think it is dirty, come. Somebody has to be a savior. Come and make it clean. Come out and play your role and play the clean part and then let, let's start from there. I'll vote for a woman if a woman comes out as a president in this country. Maybe if they are going to count two votes, one will be my own. <laughs> the reason, just to encourage you. Yes, to encourage women to come out mm -hmm. there. Okay, now, mommy, we have well, looked at how you have gone through in life. Now, the message we want to hear from you, we want to tap from your wealth of experience now that we've been talking, yes. We know you've, a you've learned a lot along life's way, paths, today that you're a grandmother. You've seen a lot, you've learned a lot, and you know a lot. Let's tap from your, the lessons life has taught you as a woman, having arrived at the position where you are today? Uh, so many things, I don't know where to start from. But let me just say this that comes to my mind. Every woman must be born again. The reason I'm saying it is that it makes the journey easy for you. 
when you have God on your side, you see, this, my uncle didn't help me, my father didn't help me, will not be there. God will raise up people to help you. Women go through a lot in Nigeria. Let me use the word Nigeria, generalize. Mm. They go through a lot of discrimination. People don't like them. They say all kinds of things about them and so on. If you are a woman, you, maybe you are a professor, they will say you have slept with all the lecturers. If you are whatever, just a regular lecturer, they will say you have been sleeping with all the professors and all kinds <laughs> of things. They say a lot of derogatory things about me. You know what? Do not listen to them. You know your goal. You know what you are, uh, what you are pursuing, what is ahead of you. Remain focused and don't allow anything to pull you down. What I'm saying is that I went through a lot. I must confess to you, when you look at me, you know that I'm not as young as people think I am. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm in my 70s now, and so wow. I know what pe women have gone through in my time. It was not easy. But you know what? I was able to break through the bar barriers. So if I could make it, you are in a better position now to, to do greater things. Don't allow anybody to intimidate you. You can still make it as a wife. Make it as a career woman. Make it as a child of God. But I, 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 you know, in all, I say to you, number one is, you must be born again. It makes the journey very easy. God will help you to carry the load. Okay. Uh, yes, to these girls, uh, to these women, like mommy has just said, she is in her 70s. Yesterday she was a girl. Mm -hmm. Today she's this is where she is, and she has told you she studied so much. She used her brain. She had a vision, and she pursued it, believing in herself and her God. Today, today's girls that we have will be tomorrow's women, and so we say, let's encourage the girl child, let's train the girl child, and let's help the girl child to achieve all that she needs to achieve to become who she wants to be in life. And you need to believe in yourself. My womanhood is my pride. Okay, now we are wrapping up and we're about leaving you, mommy. What are those words you want to leave our young girls and our women out there with that anytime they see you again, they'll remember, oh, mommy Bennett said this. I just want you to remember that I said, God will help you carry your body. You are not the body bearer. Jesus is the body bearer. You need him to help you to make it in life. That is the truth. All this unnecessary rising and falling will not be there if you give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something. This world is not an easy place. Mm. But the Lord on your side will make it a smooth ride for you. Mm. That is what I want you to remember. And then to remember that please go and acquire a skill or skills. Learn something. I know of a young lady in this town who is an engineer, went to school, got her Two one in engineering, I think uh, civil engineering, but she she's so good with tying gele, and she's a makeup artist. She's making millions from that skill. Go and learn something. She's married. First of all, she's beautiful. She has degree. Mm -hmm. Then she has skills. She's making money. So it's possible. It's doable. Mm -hmm. If you if you don't remember anything, remember that I said if you can acquire your skills, nobody will steal your skills from you at all. Nobody will. <laughs> Thank you so much, ma'am, for speaking with us today on The Woman in You. Yes, so we've come to see, hear, and tap from the woman in Dr. Mrs. Augusta Ogbeni. Thank you once again, ma'am. You're welcome. Yes, it's The Woman in You. I've got dreams, and you've got some dreams too that you want to achieve in life. And it's going to take determination. It's going to take perseverance, hard work, and you believing in yourself above all as a woman to be able to achieve that. We'll be speaking with Dr. Mrs. Augusta Ogbene. She's Vision Coordinator, Christian Women Intercessors for All Nations. And we heard a lot from her today. I want to believe you've achieved some things uh, from the talk today from her, from her life experiences, all she went through. It wasn't that easy for her, as you can see right from when she was a girl up until now that she is a grandmother and uh, sitting at the position where she is sitting today. It's never going to be that easy, but you need to be determined. And above all, you need to believe in yourself. You know one thing? Confidence is one thing you should wear, or you must wear as a woman whenever you're leaving your house. Just believe and have the confidence that you're going places. And I tell you, the sky won't be your limit. You will bust the skies. <laughs>
I've got pride, I've got potentials, and I'm special. I have class. Joy Uchi is my name. And I'm signing off, and I'm see you. I will see you next week. Stay blessed.